Anand satellite is the third and final of our demo satellites that we are building at Pixel. What we focus on Pixel is specifically hyperspectral imaging satellites. It also happens to be the the satellite that is launching from Indian soil for the first time. The Bengaluru-based startup Pixel will launch its third hyperspectral satellite Anand into space on November 26. The satellite will be launched into space using the Indian Space Research Organization's Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. Pixel focuses on building hyperspectral imaging satellites. Hyperspectral imaging can help see problems that are not possible with existing satellites. The company has already launched two demo satellites, Iteration 1 and Iteration 2. The previous launches, however, were from SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket of Cape Canaveral in the US. Team Indian Express caught up with Awiz Ahmed, who co-founded Pixel with Shitij Khandelwal in 2019 to know more about Satellite Anand. The Anand satellite is the third and final of our demo satellites that we are building at Pixel. What we focus on Pixel is specifically hyperspectral imaging satellites. And that's because hyperspectral imaging can help us see problems that are otherwise not been possible with existing satellites. So we didn't want to repeat what was done. We wanted to take Earth observation to the next level, see in a lot more detail than has been possible, detect gases and problems and leaks um, at a level of detail that existing multispectral satellites couldn't do. So um, in the process of launching and deploying our own hyperspectral satellite constellation, we had to first prove out that as a concept, hyperspectral imaging from space can provide data sets that are of good quality, that can actually do what we are talking about. That is actually see methane leaks, that is actually see underground oil leaks, that is actually see pest infestations or crop diseases early on. And in that process, we already have launched two of our demo satellites, which were iteration one and iteration two. And this is iteration three of our demos um, that will go up and complete out the set where we test and experiment and iterate on our technology, which means that now we are all done in terms of demo satellites and can focus completely on the commercial satellites that we will launch starting next year. Um, so that's the, the importance of, uh, of Anand. It also happens to be the, the satellite that is launching from Indian soil for the first time because the, the previous two demo satellites that we launched launched from SpaceX Falcon 9 rockets just because the schedule didn't work out. But finally, we are glad to be launching with uh, the ISRO PSLV rocket as well, given that you know the, a lot of work for the satellite was actually done here in Bangalore. I mentioned this term hyperspectral imaging. Let's take a step back. There are essentially three kinds of imaging that you can do today from space. There's RGB, there's multispectral, there's hyperspectral. The, the terms sound very fancy, but fairly simple to understand. Everything that we see with our human eyes or everything that we take an image of from our phone cameras is an RGB image. And what that means is we are seeing things in the red, green, and blue wavelengths. That's what R, G, and B stand for. So everything with our phone cameras, with our eyes, is an R, G, B image. Information in only three wavelengths, red, green, and blue. Existing satellites can do a little bit better. They can do between 5 to 10 wavelengths, including red, green, blue, but a few in the infrared range. And a very good, astute example for this would be the night vision goggles that the army use. You might have seen in shows or movies where in the night when the army have to see what's ha what's there and they have to detect heat signatures of someone, they use these night vision goggles. That's an example of a multispectral imager where you're able to see beyond your natural eye capacity in the infrared range. But that that is still limited to about 10 wavelengths in maximum. The benefit comes from hyperspectral imaging in the sense that hyperspectral imaging is capturing information in hundreds of wavelengths. So going from 3 to 10 to now hundreds, and that is what enables us to see things in a lot more detail. Let me take an example. If I were to look at a farmland with an RGB satellite or, or an RGB image, I can only say that here is a farm and here is a building and here is the city because that's what our human eyes are able to do. With today's multispectral satellites in space, we can go one step beyond and be able to look at it and say that the health of the crop is good, it's bad, it's somewhere in between. And it's doing good, it's doing bad, it's doing okay. But what we need is... A actually a lot more detail which is where hyperspectral comes in as i mentioned these 100 wavelengths some of those wavelengths will tell us 
what nutrients are present in the soil. So a farmer will know whether there's nutrients missing there, such as nitrogen or phosphorus or potassium, and thereby what fertilizer to use. Once the crop is grown, the farmer will know if there's an early onset of pest infestation or a crop disease so that those can be taken care of, as well as whether irrigation levels are proper, whether chlorophyll levels are proper, um, and you know whether they're getting the nutrients that they actually need. So that's an example from an agricultural standpoint where hyperspectral data helps. Or uh, we can help in the environment sector by looking at oil and gas pipelines, because whenever there is an underground oil leakage, that results in the changing of how the soil essentially is there. And hyperspectral imagery picks that up and says that there is a leak here that needs to be plugged for an underground oil pipeline or uh, any of the gases that are above. We can identify methane. Some of those hundreds of bands identify methane, some of the else identify some other gases. So essentially, um, that's what hyperspectral imaging is and that's what we are focusing on. A couple of things that we're focusing on, right? One is it's not enough to just bring in the data and hope that the customers will come. So we have been focusing on reaching out to users of our data, potential users of our data, some of whom are already customers, some of whom we hope will be customers uh, in sectors as varied as agriculture, oil and gas, mining, climate, governments around the world, because beaming down the data is just step one, ensuring that it is utilized by the right organizations and therefore used for um, sustainable and uh, transparent operations in the world is the second part. So we're focusing on reaching out and ensuring that we have set up that community of users that can actually take our data and uh, put that to good use in the world. The second thing that we're focusing on is building out a software platform that can make it easy for anyone to actually download our data and analyze our data. Um, again, it's not just enough that we dump the data into the customer's hands or the partner's hands and say, figure it out. We need to provide the tools necessary to extract essential information from there. So a software platform, very much similar to Google Earth, where you can go in, add in your latitude or longitude or just search for your place, draw a polygon and be able to say, here is where I want to be able to see how things are changing all in a software format, all on the web um, is the second thing that we're focusing on. And thirdly, and most importantly, we are focusing on putting our constellation up next year. The, as I mentioned, these are the, the Anand completes the set of three demos that we built. But what we need to build and put out there for global scale commercial operations are commercial satellites. And we plan to put about a 24 of these in total. But out of those 24, the first six are currently being built, are currently being tested at our facilities in Bangalore. And that's what we're focusing on to ensure that by mid of next year, we have these six satellites go up. We have global coverage. We're able to um, serve our customers anywhere on the globe on our every 24-hour basis. So those are the three priority areas and focus areas for ZPixel today.